Hello guys, today my topic of discussion is autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive diseases and uh, how to make the Pennard scale of these diseases and how to recognize the pedigree on the real exam, right? So before showing you the pedigree of autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive diseases, I will teach you some points how you can recognize the pedigree on the exam. So here is the next slide. So pedigree solving points. First question you have to see in the pedigree that if the parents are there is involved. Now this one I have given you a pedigree. This one I make a pedigree in which you have to see in the first question you have to see if the parents are involved. So this is the mother and this is the father and you can clearly see that the mother is affected, right? So my answer will be yes, right? So if parents are involved, then I then you have dealing with the dominant inheritance or diseases. I'm just using the word dominant right so next point you will see in the pedigree if both male and female offspring are affected i will go back to this pedigree so mother is affected yes parents are affected then i will see the offspring you can see this is male which is affected and this is a female which is affected so what would be my answer yes both male and female are uh, involved so my answer will be i am dealing with the autosomal dominant inheritance so as I show you in the X-link dominant uh, video that in X-link dominant traits are diseases only male or female offsprings are affected depending upon the involved parents right so in case of X-link dominant only female offspring or only male offspring will be involved depending upon which parent is actually involved right so look at this this is I'm showing you the X-link dominant disorder right so look at this pedigree so here is the father who is involved you can see over here let me get my pointer so this is father it is involved now below you see daughter is involved daughter is involved daughter is involved so this is what fdd father daughter dominant father daughter dominant traits so this is how the x link dominant cap pedigree will be look like if i go back to this rough pedigree which i have made you see this is mother involved and now offspring will be male is involved female is involved so that's why we say that it is autosomal dominant not the x link dominant traits now the next slide you have to make this parent square so this is a parent square of autosomal dominant diseases you can use either a capital a and the small a using that like a capital a is the dominant allele which is mutant and the recessive allele is a small a which is normal right and this uh, pink boxes they are showing you the affected offspring as you know that uh, if the father is affected it give the gene to the uh, uh, offspring so they will be affected in case of autosomal dominant so this pedigree if you see uh, this father is having the affected allele so it gives to this one and this one now over here uh, you have to remember this and is the involved or the dominant or the mutant allele and these are the normal these are the normal case so how the autosomal dominant uh, pedigrees look like now over here you see this father is affected but daughter is affected and uh, male are also affected and the sons are also affected in case of let me show this one only father is actually dominant father is affected daughters are affected there is no male to male transmission However, in X-link dominant, if father is affected, daughters and son both are affected, you are dealing with the X, uh, autosomal dominant disorder. The second thing about the autosomal dominant disorder, you have to remember that every generation is involved. No, there is no skip generation. As you see, this daughter is involved and his kids are involved. This son is involved. He gets married and he, uh, his kids are also involved. So that is the story about the autosomal dominant disorder, right? So in this parent scale, you have to remember one thing that each of the square is presenting 25 percent so this is 25 percent this is 25 percent this is 25 and this is 25 total of 100 right so for the solving of the probability right so in autosomal dominant disorder there is a probability of probability that 25 plus 25 there is probability of that 50 percent 50% offspring will be affected and 50% would be normal. That is a separate topic. I will teach you about this one separate, but over here, yes, you have to remember. So now again, we go to the pedigree solving points related to the recessive. 
So again, you will ask parents involved or affected, no. So if parents are not involved, right? So then you might be decided, then you might be dealing with the recessive disorder. As I said, no. So in this case, you see mother and father, they are not affected. So I will say no, parents are not affected. So result will be, it is a recessive pattern. Now we have to see recessive pattern. Be it, uh, uh, make sure that I'm, uh, that you have to see that this is a recessive pattern. I'm not seeing axling or autosomal recessive yet. So recessive pattern. Now how you will decide that it is autosomal recessive and axling recessive, right? So if only daughters are affected in the first pedigree, then it would be axling recessive and father is a carrier, right? Father is a carrier. So, and there is no male to male transmission. So second is if sons are affected, it would be x link recessive, but mom is a carrier are affected, right? As I showed you this one, MSR. So over here, you can see mother, son, recessive, mother, son, recessive. So over here in this pedigree, you see mom is affected. Now all the sons are affected. So uh, ma mother, sons recessive so this is x-link recessive you are dealing with right this is how you solve the question as i'm showing you over here again let me go back to this slide so if parents are not affected you are dealing with the recessive pattern so how you will conclude it that it is autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant you will see only daughters are affected then you are dealing with the x-link recessive but father is a carrier and if only mother is uh, if only sons are affected, it is excellent recessive, but mom is affected. Here you go the pedigree in which you say, which is saying that mother is affected and only there is a son transmission. So mother, sons, recessive. So this is how the excellent recessive pedigree will be look like. Just a differentiating I am showing you from the autosomal recessive. Now how to make the parent care of the autosomal recessive inheritance over here you can see capital A, small a. Over here the small a is showing the uh, carrier or the uh, mutant lead right so this is you get the pedigree from this one as i shows you uh, tell you before that each of the square will be present 25 percent so 25 25 25 and 25 so in case of autosomal recessive so your result will be 25 percent child will be normal right then 25 25 which carrier which have this mutant allele small a right so 25 i'm writing just over here 25 plus 25 these two so plus is 50 so there is a chance of 50 percent of carrier offspring and this is 25 so the rest of the 25 is affected child right so in case of autosomal recessive diseases, you have 25% chance that your offspring will be normal. You have 50% chance that the child will be carrier and there will be 25% chance that the child will be affected. So this is how autosomal recessive parent scale will be look like and this is how you will conclude the probability. Now over here, this is the pedigree. So you can see female and male the both they are not involved over here over here and these were mother father they are not involved right so daughter is only affected right so one point if parents are not involved you are dealing with the recessive pattern and then if daughter is over here daughter is involved over here son is involved so both are involved right so you're dealing with the autosomal recessive uh, diseases one thing you have to remember that in autosomal recessive pedigree you have skip generation you see this is the first pedigree, second pedigree, this which is daughter is involved, son is involved. In next pedigree, you see over here, no child is involved, right? They might be carrier, they don't show any disease or they will be unaffected. So it causes a skip generation. In case of autosomal dominant, right over here, as I showed you, every generation is involved. This is how you can conclude it. You are dealing with the autosomal dominant. And uh, remembering one point, repeating again, if parents are affected and both uh, male and female offspring are affected you are dealing with the autosomal dominant inheritance and if every generation is involved that is second point you have to remember that you are dealing with the autosomal dominant in case of autosomal recessive if both parents are not involved they are carrier of the disease 
and if only female or only male are involved then you can conclude it that this is uh, like if mother is involved and only sons are involved then it is x-link recessive but in case of uh, autosomal recessive the one either male or female is involved and the second thing it skips the generation as you can see not every generation is showing the disease that is the whole story about the autosomal recessive and uh, autosomal dominant pedigree and this pennant square so next topic i will teach you about the probability thank you so much guys stay tuned bye, -bye.